Oh, I love okay. I'm like, go to the radio okay. station. Okay, we're going to call this, uh, to be the whole morning. meeting to order. So remind me tomorrow. That's what we're going to begin then. So we're going to begin then. Be Item number one is public <laughs> works and maintenance. Uh, 1.1 1 .1 is the claim of the theft of timber, in quotations. What up? Um, basically with this, each year we uh, go and have unsightly premises and what we do is we send letters to them in accordance with our bylaw. In this particular case, the property owner was not impressed and said that we stole the timber. We followed all the regulations. The reason this is on your agenda is basically because the letter was written to Mayor and Council. The Town of the Paw has followed the regulations. Um, I would suggest we receive this as information. Can I suggest we receive this as information, add the thing to his property taxes as per the bylaw, and if he chooses to take this further, deal with it then. Yeah. Okay. How about that? Any other comments on that? So Good to hear <laughs> what you did and, and, and what was removed. It's yeah. good to see that. Uh, yeah, I think you can. You can tell them that Mary and Council is stand in receipt of your letter. Yeah. They are in, yeah, they stand by the decision. Council exactly. Good. Is there a way to beef up bylaw 4506 so that we can deal with more of these? Unsightly properties. What do you mean, beef it? Well, is there anything more we can do? I think I sent you this example from Flin Flon. They seem to be having some success with yes. tearing stuff down, getting to the point where they're actually tearing down. Okay, that's I don't, not I don't what know. this is, but. But okay. it's under that bylaw, isn't it? Somewhat, somewhat. It's under two. There's your okay. maintenance one, yeah, and this one is. I understand what you're saying yeah, about yeah. unsightly premises. Yeah. Like about derelict, derelict buildings more than unsightly yeah, premises. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and we do have our departments looking into that. Okay. Okay, so we'll see if we can muscle them up, okay? Um, finance and Administration, 4.1, the 2016 audit. So basically we do have an agreement or a contract with Collins Barrows for audit services. What we require is a resolution to sign the annual engagement letter. And that letter is attached. So this is just a formality. Yeah, just to receive <coughs> his information? Yep. A resolution, I suppose a resolution. A resolution to sign. Okay, uh, 4.2 Manitoba Sustainable Development we, in the province of Manitoba. Sorry, we've been approached by pre previous Manitoba Conservation asking for a memo memorandum of understanding. This is uh, as it relates to mutual aid in case there is any kind of an evacuation or anything with uh, lake residents. This is something we commonly do. Yeah. So we'd require a resolution. Okay. okay. Uh, anybody have any comments? 4.3, uh, Mobility Disadvantage Transportation Program. Uh, the annual operating report is something we receive every year in order to provide them with funding under the program. Uh, this is one program that we didn't look at a, a budget decrease, I understand. We do need a resolution to sign the agreement for the handy van funding. However, I'm recommending that we ensure that we are aware of any potential shortfalls at all times. I think we need to get a little bit more regular financial reporting. If okay. we're going to be responsible for any kind of debt, I think we need to have financial reporting a little more often. So okay. do they have a rather at the end of the year? Yeah. Yeah, it's a very small board. So yeah. could we ask that, like, with, like, I know in a lot of the places that we provide funding to, like, you know, like, even, like, the destination marketing for, for in our terms of reference, it says, like, all of our minutes, all of our committee meeting minutes have to get sent to Mayor and Council. So can, can we look at doing something like that where they're sending us their like board meeting minutes because that sort of sure. thing would be like in their financial statements and help to kind of keep a grasp on it then since we don't have somebody who sits on that board. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll have that. Like with the meeting. So board meeting minutes yeah. and regular financial reporting. Yeah. Usually at a, me a meeting you would get like yeah. some sort of financial report, right? Or at we least should. like quarterly yeah. financial reports or something. Perfect. Okay, 4.4, 4, 1559 Gordon Avenue, Councilor Gibb. So we've made no illusions before that we have too many assets and we have some of the highest operating costs for a municipality within the province. And we also went so as far to ask the library to look for a new location to habitate in the community. But we still have the visitor information center that sits south of town that has some value. Majority of the tenants, as we just heard, like TPCRC, are on funding from the province. So there's no recourse if you're a tenant left. So we should put it up for sale. We have adequate space upstairs. We have the whole office sitting there empty. And we talk about it, and we look at it in other groups. You guys got to find location, got to find location. We got an asset that long term we might not have tenants for. And we so need to get out of that and s get rid of it more if we have a chance. Go so technically, I mean, who owns and operates that building? Town the town of Paul. So that's who should have 
lease agreements with the tenants that are in the building. Because TPCRC doesn't have a lease agreement, right. and several okay. months before Christmas... So that's a separate issue that's being dealt with through the CDC, okay. right? Because that, whoever set the CDC up before, well, gave just, them the right, so, but this is a complete... I know, as it, but it's we on here, 1559, you're bringing, you talked yeah, about TPCRC about and tenants, it. and it was yeah. something that's been yeah. brought up before, so I just wanted to ask who's responsible yeah, who's for these lease agreements. So if it's the town, why is TPCRC dealing with the CDC? When they should be dealing with the town because they're they've been overcharged for rent. Crystal, the town point, the point the of the, the town owns the building. I'm suggesting we sell the building. The lease is a separate issue that if you want to discuss another time, and gladly do. People are working on it. I believe Jody's working on the lease agreements. Whoever set up the last CDC, in my opinion, they didn't do it right because title has always been held with the town, right? So the town's fully responsible for that building. And if through TPCRC, and I know you're hearts there so I mean if they're upset about what they're paying that's nothing I could do they didn't have a lease they kept paying they had a lease that they got charged too much that's but they've been told that the lease is going to be worked it, out and their rent is, is going to be reduced that, and, and that's that. that's happening now and that's okay. happened last six weeks so I mean at the same time that's not what I'm suggesting here I'm saying we have an asset we have too many assets we need to get rid of it put it up for sale for six issues. months yeah. yeah anybody else what the, what's the value on that building what's market value on it what are we, what's the price? What will we accept? What's the assessed value? Do we know? Well, the assessed value is... The assessed value is, value is more than what you can actually be getting. Get for, right? I'll tell you that right now. So in a case like that, you're building somewhat worth the, what your leases, the strengths of your leases, right? And you work it backwards, but the leases aren't worth that much. Um, but there's some contingent value. I mean, that right now, the idea is, that in principle, is everyone in favor of looking at selling it? And if yes. we are, then we need to take the next step and look at value and talk about that. I would oh. just look, do a little bit, because remember there was a grant in the beginning when that building was built, yeah. so you need to make sure that, A, you can sell it be for a profit, because th part of the agreement with the federal and provincial government when you got that money is if it was sold for a profit, some of that money needs to go back to the federal and provincial government. There was a, so that's there was not, a timeline. that's not true, because we look, I looked into that before bringing it forward, otherwise it wouldn't be worth my time bringing it forward so we looked into that and we're good the only issue is around chamber. the chamber that's and, 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 that, so, and, yeah. Yeah. and that says yeah. assessed value it it's doesn't say the, right. the sale now value. They, yeah. we've had a discussion about that but mm -hmm. the next point the point is that if we're interested in selling it then we can take the next step if we're not then we're not right so uh, hands are we interested in selling I, at this time, I, I would like to see more information mm -hmm. because to me, that's prime real estate. Uh, it's got location, it's got things mm -hmm. going for it, and if we're going to give it away for a song because we want a few bucks, and, and then in five years' time, somebody gets okay. the windfall profit. So right uh, now, Brian, I, I don't know. I just we're, we're forgiving $15,000 roughly a year in property taxes on that building. So if you go forward 10 years and discount that back, that's another way to evaluate, evaluate the, the value of the property, right? Right now we're getting zero. We have all the expenses, we have all the risk, and we, got, we, we get a bit of rent, right? If you forego that, and now you're getting, like, it's an investment. You sell it, and now you're getting, you're getting 30, 40 years of return on it. So that's why I'm saying it like, yeah. so I mean, you, you might I add, the only reason that we have it in our possession is because the chamber didn't want to operate it anymore and they made an agreement with the town of the Paw. Take it no away. disrespect, but I don't think we're in the business to be landlords. Yeah, that's right. No, and we've got enough assets to be landlords with already. Yeah. You know, if we needed to find space for those people that are down in okay. 59, let's take it to the next level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, what is the next level? We're going to go to the... Well, we'll find out what it's worth. We'll... I guess we'll figure out what a, a fair asking price would be and we'll bring that forward to the next committee of the whole or one shortly thereafter. Yeah. What I will do is contact um, the realtors and ask what it would be listed as. Because I'd already brought at the last meeting forward the assessed value. Things aren't selling for the assessed value. So I think it's fair to go to both realtors and ask them. Okay. Uh, 4.5, yes, disposal of uh, duplicate assets. Councilor again. So along the same lines, and I in your request form, I put the picture of the Zamboni. That's for sale. Where we, someone sold their second Zamboni for seventeen thousand, or it's for sale in Kijiji. So we have two Zambonis, we have two sidewalk plows, and we seem to have a long-term plan of buying new stuff and keeping the old stuff operating. We're orders. As well. So we, I think we need to have a duplicate asset disposal plan and put it in effect 
like within the next 90 days. I'll say be happy Jody's not here because this is why she tried hiring someone a year yeah. ago to get these assets. Yeah, we have recently, the guy just did his orientation yesterday, hired someone to assist in the purchasing department to get all inventory and equipment and supplies yeah. up out there. Good. Happy to hear. Yeah. Do we also so in the next nine days, everything gone? What's that? <laughs> Pardon me? Do we also what? Can we also sell some of the land and reduce the storage no, 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 space so that, they, so that they don't fill it up again? The town, the town yard is <laughs> the are that probably some are not interested <laughs> in subdividing at this point. But if you recall, Jody had brought this forward before. Yeah. 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 So now we're in a position where we're doing it. Yeah. yeah. Going to carry this a little a step further, is there something... Uh, we, policy or something we should should have put in place that if we buy replacement equipment we just have to dispose of the equipment it's replacing uh, so you that it just automatically policy. happens yeah. and it doesn't just get apart because somebody thinks it's a good idea at the time. And we can add that to a policy. Yeah. Yeah. If, if that were done then <coughs> it just gets done that way and we don't have to because I, I worked with another institution that regularly mm -hmm. they had to have an option because they filed it out every you know, okay. 10 years. <laughs> Okay, so we'll have our Zamboni on Kijiji soon, then, is that what we're hearing? Okay. Where's the other Zamboni? Where's the other Zamboni? It's at the town yeah. Oh, is it? It's in BJ's backyard. Yeah, it's in BJ's backyard. 4.6, letter of support for homecoming 2017. So, basically, what we as management would like to know is the direction of council as to how we want to deal with these letters of support for the destima destination marketing grant moving forward. Do you want to be writing letters of support to every organization that comes to us, or? When, just if I may comment, when that came forward while you were waiting, Mayor Scott, um, we looked at it and, and uh, I, re as Deputy Mayor, I received a draft letter for that. The, the question became, uh, and I discussed it with uh, the Assistant CAO, that, and we both agreed that it would be inappropriate, I think, for council to be recommending to a committee that's established to make those decisions independent of us to tell them what to do. Because uh, basically that's, that's what a letter of support that specific would be doing. Uh, because it was specifically geared to be sent to and written to that body to tell them council wants you to do this. No, it does not say that. Council it's a request of support from the homecoming committee. Where we'd, we would send a letter to the homecoming committee wishing them great success in their, in their uh, put, putting together that, that homecoming weekend. We're not sending a letter to Destination Marketing saying, hey, we think this is something you need to invest in, get on it. We're not doing that. We're sending them, they're asking for a letter of support. Homecoming committee is asking for a letter of support for their, <coughs> their weekend. So, so what we're right. asking is what is your direction? Well, send them a letter of support saying, go get them good luck. So it's more to show that there's yeah, community know, support the for a project, right? We had, it was they did, they yeah. gave a verbal, yeah. somebody gave a verbal <laughs> Not to share. And it was problematic in terms of what specifically they were asking for because the, the intent of, of the draft letter was to specifically target that committee. But then which the, is why we brought it oh, here as a But to the letter, it's, it's, it's going to be a generic letter, like yeah. just offering. Yeah. And that's yeah. what the question yeah. is, is asking And this provides direction. that yeah. committee with better armor when they go to destination market. Well, we're it not doesn't getting even, involved with destination market. Yeah, you, you write the letter to the committee, so the committee can use that generic letter of support for as whatever their, grant yes, they whatever they're after. The letter is just going to say yeah. the town yeah. supports yeah. homecoming. All we're saying is we support your efforts in fundraising. That's all I would say. Exactly. Good luck. That's what we tell them. Yeah, that's what it should be. Okay, we should write the letter. Yep. So are you looking at efforts in fundraising or no, you support your No, good efforts? luck on your, on your no. weekend. We support, we support your endeavors. Go get them. Okay. You're filling in here kind of thing. You know what I mean? All right. Um, where are we? 4.7, 2015 Public Sector Compensation Disclosure Report. What we need is a resolution to sign the Public Sector comp Compensation Report. This report outlines payment to council for the year of 2015. Yeah. I think also, just if I may, I know other people are looking at it, just as by way of information, is that um, we're looking at talking to government, some agencies of government are looking at talking to the province about raising that disclosure level to 75,000 from its current level of 50,000. Is it, this is provincially maybe the 50,000? It is, yeah. yeah. Okay, 
That will be provided to the, letter, to the auditor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Four point eight payroll and accounts. What would require is a resolution to cover uh, amounts for pay period one and two in the amount of two hundred seven three sixty four sixty nine. Checks, general checks in the amount of 653-91464, an electronic fund transfer in the amount of 116-577-26. Um, some of the ones that stand out in the accounts uh, is the demolition of the Kinsman Campground in the amount of 11550 and one large payment, which is a quarterly payment for RCMP, in the amount of $459,900.71. <coughs> And the checks are Town of the Pot and KRC. Yeah. Okay. Which is, yeah. So it's just general. Yeah. Any comments? Yep, yeah, that one was pretty hard to choke on when you write those checks. I think Brian got to sign that one. Did you sign that check? No, no, no I didn't. Did you sign it before you went? No, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. 4.9 tax incentive bylaw. This has been discussed around the table. The council would look at it. It's never been discussed at all. So we took it upon ourselves to present what we believed would have been something for you guys to review and at least give consideration for first reading. I would ask, please review this. And I suggest we go with first reading to get it on the table at least. If you have any changes, let us know. I'm okay with first reading. Brian? Uh, I, I did have a... Um a concern where, and I can't recall where it was, but somewhere in there it was, uh, it seemed to be final, funneling through your position. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, my concern with that was when, when, if we do it that way, then you have to be here to handle all those things, or. <coughs> and, I, and, I, and I get, okay, to shorten it up, I guess what I was wondering, through the CAO or your delegate? Yep. Uh, Add when I'm not here, she's the, add, add the but but adding that in because if we if we say in the bylaw that it's you, then it's you. It's not anybody else. But uh, I'm her when she's not here. That's your position that's my specifically. Acting I'm acting CAO, so when she's not here, that's me. And one of us is usually here. Chad. So for me, um, I'd like to see it maybe stretch out past the the two years. Like that would be, I guess, my first thoughts. At it. I'd like to see um, it going past two years. I may add with that, this was also done with the assistance between Jen, myself, and the CFO. Mm -hmm. And this was, we talked about it being longer, this was a recommendation by the CFO as to how it would affect the rest of the community. Have, have we had any discussions with developers on this, because because I'm thinking in the past number of years, is every time we turn around, it's changed, and I and I can appreciate the challenge it must be making for administration, because in this time window, this was the these were the rules that people signed up on, and then in this time window, when we changed the bylaw, new rules came into play, and and now and we're we're adding another one yet again. Uh, so how do how do we get one that's going to last us for 20 years? What happened generally is people didn't like what they were getting, so they come and they complain to council. We changed the bylaw, and that's why we have six individual bylaws. I'm saying let's right. stick to our guns on a bylaw for a change. Right, I agree with that, but I, I would also, I, I hearken back to, do we spend a lot of time on a taxi bylaw, but it, it seems like we finally came up with something that all parties were, were in agreement with. If we could get some of that input prior to council approving it, and then yet again, They'll, they'll come back and say, hey, we want this change and that change because we don't like it. Might as well find that out before we approve any further changes and try and get a, a document that that works for the long haul. One of the challenges with that, Brian, is the people that do have an interest in this bylaw are the ones that benefit from the bylaw. Right. And I guess we're looking at it from the aspect of the administration and the finances of the town. And right. that's where we believe we have taken into consideration all the previous bylaws that there have been to create this one. We pick the best out of all of them to try and give us the best bang for our buck and also for the person that's going to be receiving this grant to get the best bang for their buck. So what this did was it took all the concerns and tried out outlining all of them to create this bylaw. Right. And so, so yeah. is it, and is Swan Rivers was another one. Dolphins was mm -hmm. another one. We've done all those comparisons with other communities. Right. And, and I think that that's fine. But I'm still concerned that 
that we need to look at it in terms of the intent of the whole, the whole intent of it, it is to get building to occur. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if the group of people that put their money up and do the building aren't happy, are, are they going to move that money somewhere else? Or, and, I, and I guess I'm just suggesting to council that, like, hey, why don't we have some discussions with them with, in the draft stage so that we have them on board? as opposed to uh, coming back after the fact. Councilor Commodore. Uh, I don't think they're, they're going to push it more and more and more. I think we have to realize we've got the administration, and we've got their CFO, and they've done their research, huh? and you're going to get this developer and that developer and that developer saying, like she said, I don't like it, I don't like it, can we do more changes? There's been too many changes, so like the, Randy the, says, let's stick to our guns, and if it's fair and equitable, then the, the changes of, like from the multifamily side, of each change has gone down, right? And Correct. So, and then as I mentioned here, the, the current change from the last one, the net result is the same. So it's still a five-year plan, and the numbers are changed, but the net, if you can't do the calculation, it's the exact same thing, just in a different package. And yeah. not to say that it's bad, no, but, it seems is, is is it, but are you seeing the desired result? Right? Like our population's down two and a half percent, and if we need more housing, or if we need more industrial, is this going to get us there? Which is further to your point, right? Further to our That's point, great. the industrial, we were doing absolutely nothing. nothing. We were sure. talking sure. about sure. wanting business yeah. in the town of the Paw, yet we yeah. did absolutely nothing to, to encourage any commercial yeah. and industrial development. So my question is, is this going to do it? Right? Same with multifamily. Is this going to do it? Have we seen anything over the last three or four years? Like, I don't know. Truthfully, I, people don't come to us about the development. They yeah. think it's a great idea when we tell them, hey, yeah. we have this bylaw here. Oh, this development, this bylaw does not make or break a development in this town. Most people do not even know about it until we tell them. To my knowledge, we have, since I've been involved in council, six and a bit years now, we have never gone to any industry, any manufacturer, any business type uh, potential developer and said, hey, look what we have to offer. We've never done that. And so um, with our Community Development Corporation, um, looking more into areas like that, of us being a bit more aggressive about what we should have in our community, and going out and getting it, I think this is a good opportunity to test those waters to see if this is the package that's going to work. I think we've put a lot of work into it. We've changed it and changed it and changed it. And really, for no one's benefit but our own, and so we're about to move forward into a new area we've never gone before. And this, to me, is a piece of armor that we can use as, 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 a, as an attraction, as a, as a selling tactic, as a, as a way to convince people to come here. And so let's... Uh, Let's move this forward um, at the next council meeting. Let's get that first reading done and get this thing moving. Anything else? We'll bring it forward for first reading in the next meeting then. And is there a mechanism for feedback then in, in between? Yes, of course. Yeah, you, that's they're a asking idea. us for feedback. The reason we did this is because we were supposed to receive the feedback, had no direction, so we brought mm -hmm. this up on our own. So, just so I'm clear, then if, if we if we deal with it at our next council meeting at first reading, that's where will the feedback will come. Well, yeah, we can we can we can we can make changes to it. We can do whatever we have to do to it. But let's this way. This keeps it moving. It does not go back to the back burner, and will come it'll come up again in 2018. Going yeah, so about that tax incentive bylaw. So this this gets it out there and gets it moving and gets it on the plate. So we're going to we're, we're, we'll be doing something about it. So that so, by the time the second reading comes, yeah. it'll be as amended if there's any changes. Because the first one will be what we present here. You'll discuss if you want any more changes. Second reading will be as amended. By one number blah, 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 as amended changes. if there are changes. Because okay. it outlines mm -hmm. that it was changed from the original okay. presentation. So that's what we're going to do. 4.10, public safety, uh, pardon me, rail safety week. Good heavens. And basically, all we need is a resolution to declare Public Rail Safety Week being April 24th to 30th, and this is to raise awareness to reduce injury. It's yep. just like a letter of support. <laughs> it's a resolution. Resolution, resolution of support. <laughs> okay. 
Anything else? That's it. Uh, Deputy Mayor, can you move us in camera, please? We resolve that we do now move ourselves into the in-camera portion of the committee to hold with Mayor Scott in the chair to discuss matters related to planning and development. <clears throat> Thank you.